गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू रेडीज कोचिंग क्लासेस एंड डेट डे ऑल्सो इन मीन्स प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑल्सो वी स्टडीड अबाउट द एस एस सी चैप्टर नंबर थ्री फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेन एज दैट इज जोग्राफी चैप्टर एंड लेक्चर नंबर फोर ओके सो वी स्टडीड अबाउट द फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेनेज एक्चुअली वी स्टडीड अबाउट द फिजियोग्राफी नॉट ड्रेनेज दैट डे वी स्टडीड द फिजियोग्राफी ऑफ इंडिया एज वेल एज फिजियोग्राफी ऑफ ब्राजील ओके today we are going to study the drainage system of brazil okay we are today we are going to study drainage system of brazil okay open your books students because uh, even though everything is available on this slide this ppt or whatever slide or books pdf book is already available here on the screen yet you open your books for to read the text and to understand all the things clearly okay so go to page number 19 and now their drainage is given okay page number 19 on that uh, the drainage topic is given and you can see the topic now drainage uh, here write a comparative note on the basis of ganga and amazon river okay now which river obviously we in india that we feel that ganga is the largest river, sorry largest river in the world but it is not uh, uh, sometimes they tell that no it is the nile river which is the largest uh, sometimes they call it no jordan river which is the largest but it is not it is the amazon river that flows from peru to brazil it is the largest river comparison is already given on page number 19 uh, you can see total catchment area total catchment area uh you can see here total see uh the comparison between the two river ganga river that is that lies uh, that flows in india and amazon river that flows in brazil okay total catchment area what is catchment area how much water it can catch or it can absorb or it can keep in its reservoir that is the catchment area okay means water tapping capacity of a particular river so what is the catchment capacity or area in square kilometer ganga river 10 lakh uh, sorry 10 lakh 16124 square kilometer square kilometer not q say square kilometer means that is the largest catchment area available for ganga river in india okay but what about brazil's amazon river its catchment area in square kilometer is the largest compared to ganga look at it is gigantic river or you make a gigantic now 70 lakh 50000 square kilometer so you can see compared to ganga amazon river is so huge so in simple your language so big okay now total length of the river now wait length we, uh, we also measure this all this thing so length of the river in kilometer 2525 kilometer but while amazon rivers total length in kilometer is 6000 400 kilometers wow then amazon river is so big now water discharge water discharge means whatever water it is flowing and it discharge into that river to a particular river so cusec meter per second per second how much cusec meter okay now ganga river 16648 that is the water discharge of ganga river but look at the amazon you will get wonder struck okay you will wonder what is this 2 lakh 9000 cusec meter per second that is the that's why i already told you that amazon river is gigantic it is a gigantic some may call it gigantic whatever in it is uh, they are spelling it in a different manner so 2 lakh 9000 this is the way comparison by comparison you can easily see you can easily get you can easily understand that amazon river is the largest river and compared to it ganga river is tiny it's like a leviathan or you may call it is a uh, ganga is a david and uh, amazon river is goliath what goliath okay now this is what called comparison between the two rivers I mean you can understand the uh, potential of amazon river and importance of amazon river for brazil and several other country means peru and other country and ganga river's uh, importance for our country okay now we'll go to page number 19 
drainage of brazil now first we will study the same way we study about the physiography of india then we study the physiography of brazil the same way we are going to study first drainage of brazil and afterwards completion of this topic we will go to drainage of india okay go to page number 19 now drainage of brazil you can see the map of brazil over here so many rivers are flowing Oh, but main river in Amazon, largest river in the world, as well as largest river in Brazil, that is nothing but the Amazon River Basin. Amazon River Basin, you can see clearly Amazon River Basin. There are several rivers. Means only this river is not only important, but you can see Amazon River Basin is the largest in Brazil. Not and it is the largest river in the world that I already told you. So now we will go to page number 19. As part of the drainage in Brazil is concerned, there are three major river basins. Three river major basin. Uh, sorry, first one is Amazon River Basin. Obviously, it is the most important. Now, largest in the world. It is the largest in the world and largest in the Brazil. Obviously, when it is the largest in the world, it, it should be largest in Brazil also. Then second one, Paraguay Parana. You can see Paraguay and Parana river system. Uruguay river is also there, but it is not a part of that. I mean, we are not uh, discussing about it. But most important river Paraguay and Parana. Why? Because they are flowing not only what you call that in Brazil, they are going to Argentina. Remember? That we will see later. Okay. So Paraguay Parana system in the southwest, remember? east, west, north, south, southwest part. There. Uh, what you call do you can see this Parana sorry this Parana river and this is the way Paraguay river they are meeting here they are meeting here not in Brazil but in another country and you can see they are flowing towards what you call that Argentina okay so Paraguay Parana system third one São Francisco river you can see São Francisco river actually you know that part which part it is Brazilian Highland, whatever Guyana Highland is here, but not shown here, but we seen it in the last map. Okay, now Brazilian Highland, and from that Brazilian Highland flows South Francisco River. It goes towards the uh, northeast or north, and suddenly take a sharp turn and turn towards the east and meets Atlantic Ocean. That is very simple. What is what is there? Nothing but Atlantic Ocean. So it means Atlantic Ocean. So São Francisco River. So three most important rivers or important part of the drainage system of the rivers in Brazil. First one, Amazon River. Okay, or Amazon River Basin. You may call it Amazon River Basin. Second one is Paraguay Parana system or Paraguay uh, Parana River system basin that you can see Paraguay River as well as Parana River and third one São Francisco River this is also means these three are the important river other uh, other rivers are also very important but these are the VIPs very important person like that very important rivers okay so now we'll go to first first uh, what Amazon River Basin okay first bullet point that is nothing but the Amazon River Basin or in short Amazon Basin now Amazon collects its headwaters from the eastern slopes of Andes mountain in Peru now actually this Amazon River it does not originate in Brazil it originates in Peru you can see Peru and Andes mountains are there I cannot show it clearly or directly so but you can just uh, uh, draw conclusion or imagination or guess so Andes mountain it flows from the Andes mountain it come into what you call it Brazil's part means uh, Brazil's uh, what Amazon Amazon area then afterward it flows towards the Marajo Island and it means the North Atlantic Ocean okay so Amazon river receives huge discharge that already we seen that it is received the discharge or catchment area of 70 lakh 50 thousand and water discharge of 2 lakh 9 thousand cusic meter per second that is the largest river system or drainage system in the world no river can be compared to amazon river not jordan river not nile river not danube river not any rhine river no this can uh, these rivers cannot be compared with the amazon river system not even ganga or brahmaputra even brahmaputra it travels so far it travels from what you call the tibet uh, means uh, 
Ladakh, Tibet, and then it goes to China, and again it come to Arunachal Pradesh, and it goes to uh, uh, Bangladesh. Here it is not uh, largest. It is not largest river. Which one? Brahmaputra. It cannot be compared with Amazon. No river in the world can be compared with the Amazon River. That's why Amazon River Basin or Amazon Drainage System or Amazon River is the largest in the world. It's a huge, gigantic. Okay. Now you Disha, this is about two two lakh meter cube per second. 2 lakh meter cube per second. You calculate, you know uh, physics, you know maths, you calculate on your own, then you will come to know what a gigantic river or gigantic river it is. As a result, Amazon washes of the land, lower supplied it from the catchment. So due to the huge water discharge, even though it carries sediments with it, it washes it off. It doesn't go. Means, suppose Amazon River, you know already, not easy, it's not supposition, it's a reality. So, when Amazon River flows from Peru to what you call that, um, uh, what you call that Brazil, Amazon, then afterward when it goes to Marajo Island, and this way, this way also it goes because it is a large river, so largest river in the world. So, obviously, it doesn't carry sediments with it, but it disposes of, it washes it off totally. And that's why there is no lagoon, what you call, there is no, what you call a marine island. Huh, marine island is there, but there is no lagoon or there is no formation of what you call that uh, wasteland or any kind of uh, other formation like you can see um, in Bangladesh also. Okay. So, consequently sediments are not deposited even at the mouth. Even at the mouth, I mean here, no deposition of sediment. You cannot see any kind of a deposition of sediment. Sediment means uh, rocks, okay, then sand and other kinds of a material, natural material. Uh, river carries it with itself. So there is no deposition of all these things at the mouth of the river. Now, sediments are not deposited even at the mouth. A dense network of distributaries, which is a characteristic feature of river mouth area, is by and large of sand in the mouth region, sorry, of Amazon. Okay. Now, what do you mean by distributary and tributary? Tributary. Tributary is the part of the river or another river as to the main river. Like, a Ganga has some distributaries, or oh, sorry, tributaries. Brahmaputra also has tributaries, but mostly Ganga has lot of tributaries. Tributaries means what? They are adding water to the Ganga flow or Ganga river. Okay. But distributaries means what? They are taking water from the main river system. Small rivers, they are taking water. Okay. They are absorbing water from large river. So, but distributor is totally absent. There is no distributor. You can see here, even though you can see a Jarua river, Japura river, Negro river, okay, uh, flowing near to the, you can see here Madeira river, Paru's river, okay, Amazon river is, you can see here. I'm just imagine, this is the imaginary line, okay. So, Amazon river, yet there is no distributor. These are not distributor. Instead, they are adding to the Amazon river. These rivers, they are adding to the catchment area or they are adding water flow in cusec meter per second to who? To main river Amazon. That is the miracle or that is the wonder of nature in Brazil. Okay. So, consequently sediments are not deposited even at the mouth. A dense network of distributaries which, which is of a characteristic feature of river mouth areas by and large upside in mouth region of Amazon. When it reaches there, there is no distributary, no tributary, no, no, nothing is there. So, obviously, no problem. Now, instead, we'll find a series of island developed along the mouth of Amazon beyond the coastline in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, you can see here Marajo Island form. Marajo Island is formed near the coastline of North Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Now, instead, we find, sorry, Amazon beyond the, it will be interesting to note that at the mouth, the width of the Amazon channel is 150 kilometer. Now, at the mouth, the width is 150 kilometers. Think about it. Virar to church gate, 65 kilometers. Suppose you are coming back, 130 kilometers. Okay, probably one approximately 130 kilometers. Its mouth is wider than that. Means you can see how what a gigantic river 
Amazon is. It, that's why it is regarded as the largest river in the world. Okay. Now you will get an idea of the way most of the course on the mineral is suitable for navigation. Yet uh, most of the means you can navigate, you can travel. Means you can carry your boats or what like small ships, not big ships. It is not a Panama Canal. You can carry small ships or your boats or yacht or th that you can carry and you can navigate. Means you can travel. You can travel through that river. Here you can see the river is flowing actually. So you can travel through that river. Okay. Now, okay. Now second, now you can, you have seen Amazon river is, uh, river basin is so gigantic or so gigantic, okay. But second one, second most important river basin or what you call that uh, drainage system of which river? Paraguay and Parama. Paraguay, Parama, okay. So Paraguay, Parama system. These two rivers are located in the southwestern part of Brazil. You can see southwest, east, west, north. South, southwestern, this part. Okay, you can see here Paraguay River. Already I indicated it. I mark it and Parana River. I already indicated it or mark it. You can see. You can see refer to in your maps also. Now both the rivers from the catch sorry catchment of River Plata in Argentina. Okay, now they meet here and there they get water from River Plata. River Plata in Argentina. These two rivers and river Uruguay, you can see third river Uruguay. Now I am marking it. River Uruguay. In extreme south of the highland, collect the headwaters from the southern portion of the highland. Now, where these, uh, what, uh, sorry, where these, what you call that, these uh, two rivers originate? Mostly Paraguay and Parana. These rivers originate in highlands. Brazilian highland. Their origin is in Brazilian highland. They originate from Brazilian highland. So this is the Paraguay Parana system. Uh, now next one Sao Francisco. Next one Sao Francisco. You can see the river over here and I just indicated in market. Okay and where it meets. Now it is the third important river of Brazil. This is the third important river of Brazil. The entire basin of this river is within Brazil. Now, it doesn't flow outside Brazil. You can see Amazon River, it is coming from Peru. It does not originate. Amazon River does not originate in Brazil. Even though it flows to the Brazil, it is part of the Brazil. It does not collect its headwaters from Brazil, but it collects from the, it collects its headwaters or originates from Andes Mountain in Peru. Peru is another country bordering the western part western part of brazil you can see that then second river paraguay parana these even though this river they originate in brazil they doesn't remain in brazil they flow towards various countries and especially argentina okay and they uh, meet the river plata in argentina so obviously these are what you call that uh, these rivers are flowing out of the border out of the border of Brazil, but only this river, most important, there are several rivers, but this river, Sao Francisco River, it originates in Brazil, it ends in Brazil. It starts in Brazil and it ends in Brazil. How? It starts in Brazil, in Highland, Brazil and Highland, it originates in Brazil and it collects its headwaters from Brazil and Highland. And where? It goes towards the north and suddenly it takes a sharp turn and means the Atlantic Ocean. That is the uh, part of the particular the San Francisco River. So it is the third important river of Brazil. The entire basin of this river is within Brazil. So everything means basin, flow, everything is in Brazil. Now it occupies the eastern portion of the highland. It occupies the eastern portion of the highland. You know, a Brazilian highland is like this. Okay. The river flows towards the north of a distance of the 1000 km. It flows towards the north, means not direction, not in northern, northern Brazil, but it flows towards the north and suddenly it takes the sharp turn. It takes the sharp turn towards the eastern part of Brazil, that is nothing but the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Now then takes a sharp eastward turn to enter the coastal strip along the Atlantic Ocean. That is nothing but that. It means the Atlantic Ocean. Now, Atlantic Ocean, the river is navigable for a distance of about 250 km in the downstream reaches. Now, 
when it comes from the what you call high land you cannot travel through it you cannot navigate it because its current is its current or its flow is rapid or swift obviously you cannot navigate or travel in swift mod uh, sorry swift flow or swift current so obviously when afterwards it settle down and it flows slowly then that area 250 km area you it is navigable means you can easily travel through that by boat or by whatever um, other navigable um, equipment you are using okay sao francisco now coastal rivers coastal there are so many coastal river i will name it now uh, paraguaco river then then name jequitin hona river then paranaiba river itapecuru river okay these are the coastal rivers then purus river jarua river japura japura is not a coastal river but purus river and uh, jurua river it is a jurua river then you can see here madera river this is also coastal river not coastal river this is not coastal river coastal rivers are only jequi jequit in homa river paraguaco river sao francisco river paranaiba river itapecuru river and amazon river these are the five six rivers which are coastal rivers okay now south coastal river brazil has a number of short coastal rivers short coastal rivers now the coastal area being densely populated these rivers attain significance now most of the population most of the inhabitants of brazil or citizens of brazil or people of brazil they live in the coastal strip they live around the coastal area of brazil so obviously these rivers are very important because obviously potable water sorry potable water you get from river only now these rivers attain significance as well as for what you call that um, uh, cultivation crop cultivation now river paranaiba you can see here river paranaiba and river itapecuru whatever uh, uh, itapecuru flowing northwest they are flowing northwest mid the north atlantic ocean you can see paranaiba river and itapecuru river they are flowing northwest okay east west actually north is they are flowing north is wrong it is wrong so they are flowing no they are not directly in northern direction but north east but you can call it north atlantic ocean so in the northern direction okay and mid the north atlantic ocean they mid the north atlantic ocean the river that enters south atlantic ocean collect their rain water now south atlantic ocean you can see paraguaco river and jequitinha hona okay now river paraguaco enters the atlantic ocean near salvador town atlantic ocean collect their water along the escarpment and you can see brazilian escarpment area over here the great escarpment so they collect their waters from there also now this is the way the drainage system of brazil first one most important one amazon basin river or amazon river basin you may call it second one paraguay parana system it is no don't call it just river call it paraguay and parana system you can afterwards include uruguay but uruguay is not a major part of it the most important answer in the exam will be first one amazon river basin second one paraguay parana river basin and third one sao francisco these three river systems are very important afterwards you can talk about the coastal rivers coastal rivers are not very important even though from the point of your population they are very important but the, from the point of your geographic study they are not important and sao francisco already the largest uh, means after amazon after paraguay parana sao francisco within brazil is the largest river and it uh, it is also coastal river it means the what you call that uh, east atlantic actually we cannot call it east atlantic but for the for, for the sake of convenience we are calling it east atlantic it means it at east atlantic ocean so these three rivers are very important these are the drainage system of brazil first one is amazon river basin okay second one is paraguay parana system 
and third one is sao francisco river so you came to know okay now we will turn to india drainage system of india drainage system of india page uh, turn to page number 21 because without maps you won't understand anything page number 21 drainage system of india rivers in india are largely classified according to source region himalayan and peninsula rivers now you can see this is the map of india this is the map of india and this is the himalayan region that you know very well i am just demarcating it okay this is the himalayan region you can see this okay so himalayan origin rivers or rivers which originates in himalaya himalayan mountain himalayan plateau whatever or mountain ranges okay and second one peninsular region second one peninsular rivers second one peninsular or you may call it peninsula you may call it peninsula when it goes upwards then obviously it will <laughs> move upward okay peninsula is mostly the southern part okay this is just imagine yeah? you cannot uh, correctly draw it okay but you can see means just by guess okay so this is the peninsula most of these peninsula rivers are here okay now himalayan drainage first we will see himalayan drainage okay we will go upwards that is nothing but the himalayan drainage himalayan drainage himalaya himalaya you know the largest mountain ranges in the world himalayan ranges are largest mountain ranges in the world and we have the highest mountain but the first one is uh, mount everest actually that is not in india and the, you can see several other mountains and the rivers originate through it okay now we will see most of the major rivers in himalayan region is from various glaciers and obviously they, they are formed due to glaciers mountain ranges but mountain ranges are made up of what glaciers bravo large glaciers that lies in himalaya or part of himalaya or mountain ranges of himalaya from these various rivers or himalayan rivers originate now in some of these glaciers melt now himalayan what is the uniqueness or unique quality of himalayan river okay himalayan rivers are perennial in nature most of the rivers are perennial in nature why because the in summer when glaciers melt the discharge of water increases in summer mean in winter also they have a water flow or water flow through it through this river as well as in summer there is more water why the glaciers melt and obviously there is a more water discharge and that's why these uh, rivers himalayan rivers never dry no? and this part they never face drought or famine they never face drought or famine because of perennial nature of rivers now they flood during monsoon to in monsoon also they get rain they get rain so obviously they flood in monsoon you know darbhanga river in bihar ganga river brahmaputra river yamuna river yamunotri deep which come from yamunotri ravi be several river they actually flood in the month of monsoon in the months of monsoon they are perennial rivers i already told you that now the drainage covers major two river system such as sindhu sindhu means indus you can see the indus river here it originates in india but it goes to pakistan it flows to pakistan also then you can see it is known as sindhu in hindi it is known as sindhu river and in english according to the english language it is known as river indus okay rav river and ganga river system sindhu river system and ganga river system ganga originates in gangotri that is also part of the himalaya it is also part of gangotri from where the ganga river originates you can see it is flowing okay then sindhu and its tributaries sindhu and its tributaries jhelum you can see jhelum then chenab then ravi okay uh, and satluj satluj also you can see here these are the four tributaries of the sindhu river jhelum chenab uh, 
uh, then you can see Ravi and Satluj. Actually, they are also uh, at the part of the Sindhu River or Indus River, and they are the tributaries of River Indus. Now, then the Western Himalaya. So you can see Western Himalaya. How east west Western Himalaya. So they, they drain the part of Western Himalaya. And they flow through the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Mostly they flow through the Jammu and Kashmir and POK. Pakistan occupied Kashmir also. They flow almost parallel to each other. They, you can see they are flowing parallel to each other. You can see in your map also, suppose you are not getting it. You can see here they are flowing parallel to each other. Now the major tributary of river Sindhu Indus, the Satluj. The major tributary is nothing but the river Satluj of river Indus or uh, Sindhu river is Satluj. Major tributary is Satluj. Originates near Mansur and flows through westward. Actually, these originates near the Mansarovar. They, you can see here Lake Mansarovar. Actually, it is not shown clearly in the map also. But they originate in the Lake Mansarovar, the main part of Himalaya near the Ladakh region. Okay. Now, Mansur and flows through westward and they goes to the uh, means westward side of India. Punjab plains have formed from the depositary work of the river and its tributary. Now, Satluj flows to the Punjab, and that's why the plains in Punjab uh, or fertile land of Punjab is formed due to the river Satluj. Then it goes to the Pakistan part of Punjab. In India, we have Punjab. In Pakistan, also they have Sindh and Punjab. That is also they have these states, Sindh and Punjab. Okay. So the, this Satluj river goes through that area also. Now Sindhu flows through Pakistan. You can see Sindhu means river in there that flows through Pakistan. And then means the Arabian Sea. It goes to the Arabian Sea. It is the largest river system especially in Pakistan. Okay. And it is the main river. Now the river Ganga. This is the western Himalaya. Now we will go to the Ganga river. Ganga you know. Ganga river is very famous. And we uh, regard it. What you call that. Uh, we pay obeisance to it. It is a godly river, we call it. Uh, so, actually it originates in Gangotri. It originates in Gangotri. Origin from the Gangotri glacier and crosses the Himalaya to become an east flowing river. Actually go a little bit to the west, but not to the western, western part of India. But it takes a sharp turn and it goes towards the east. You can see here. It goes towards the east or eastern part of India. Many tributaries of the Ganga also flow in a similar. The same way you can see tributaries of Ganga, which river uh, here, river Ghagra, okay, river Gandak, river Rapti, river Sharda, river Gomati, then river Kem, river Betwa, river Sindh, river Chambal. Even river Yamuna is also so Yamuna also becomes the even though Yamuna is directly not part uh, sorry not, not the tributary of uh, the river Ganga it meets here it meets here this point you can see here. and it goes and meets Ganga and they all these river they flow eastwards toward the eastern side of India so Many become east flowing river, many tributaries of the Ganga also flow in a similar manner. Yamuna originating at Yamunotri, the origination of Yamuna is at Yamunotri, you can see here. Okay, it's a major tributary of Ganga. It is also regarded as a major tributary of Ganga. Okay. Now another major tributary of the Ganga flows to the northern part of Greater Himalayas, crosses the Himalaya to enter India. There are so many major tributaries of India, but another there are also various other river which also the tributaries of India and they cross the Himalaya and they enter into the India again. When it flows to the Himalaya, now you can see the one river is it is not given here. I think the map. Lake Rakas, you can see here, Lake Rakas, from there, Sangpo River, you can see this Sangpo. Actually, in Tibetan language, it is known as Sangpo. Okay, then it goes through, uh, this uh, river goes through Brahmaputra, actually, this is river in India is known as Brahmaputra. Actually, it goes through China. 
and in China it is known as Yangtze. In the language, now in Tibetan language, they call it we call it Brahmaputra. They call it Tibetan call it Sangpo. In China it is known as Yangtze, and India first when it enters it is known as River Bihang. In Arunachal Pradesh also they do not call it Brahmaputra. They call it River Bihang in their language. Okay, according to the culture, according to the language, and when it comes to the West Bengal, then it is known as River Brahmaputra, and then it enters to the Bangladesh also. So you can see, <coughs> sorry, the River Ganga originates from the Gangotri Glacier. Another major tributary of the Ganga flows to the northern part of Greater Himalaya, crosses the Himalayas to enter India. When it flows to the Himalayas, it is called Sangpo. Uh, actually, Brahmaputra River is also the tributary of river ganga but it, not, it does not directly meet ganga here it crosses the himalaya it goes into tibet china then what you call that northeastern state of arunachal pradesh and then enter to the other states or seven sisters and then it enter into what you call that bangladesh okay and meet ganga also when it crosses the himalaya it is called bihang you can see here it eastwards flow thereafter is called brahmaputra when it Eastwards flow, it flows eastward. It is also known as Brahmaputra. From time to time, Ganga makes its tributaries, hence it discharge into this. And that's why when Ganga flows alone, there is not a lot of discharge. But when other tributaries also miss time to time, obviously discharge increases because they are adding water in cusic meter per second. Okay, to whom Ganga river or Ganga flow. Now, hence it is discharged into the Ganga receives Brahmaputra as its tributary in the lower reaches in Bangladesh. Actually, Ganga does not meet, or river Brahmaputra does not meet Ganga here in India, but it in lower reaches of Bangladesh. There they meet together. Now, the huge volume of water and huge deposition has led to the formation of large delta. And because these two rivers meet at the Bangladesh, that is also lower part of Bangladesh, you can see the formation of Sundarbans or the largest deltaic region in the world, the most fertile region in the world also. Deltaic region is the most fertile that you know. So, beside this Himalayan river, Ganga receives a number of tributaries from peninsula like Chambal, Kain, Bitwa, Shon, Damodar that I already indicated and told you. Okay. So, various other rivers also meet. Various other rivers also meet. Uh, its tributaries means Ganga river. You can see here uh, Kain, <laughs> Kain, River Kain, River Betwa, River Sin, River Chambal. Okay, these rivers Son, these also, these rivers also meet the Ganga. These are the tributaries Ganga. Okay, and they add to the discharge of uh, river Ganga, water discharge of Ganga. Now, Peninsular River. This is what of what you have to call that Himalayan River. Whatever we studied, whatever we saw, or whatever you observe, that is about the Himalayan rivers. Okay, now we will go to the peninsular rivers. Peninsular rivers, you can see here. Go upstairs. Sir. Now, the peninsular river system can be divided into east flowing as well as west flowing. Okay, west flowing and east flowing. West flowing means meeting the Arabian Sea, those rivers meeting the Arabian Sea. East flowing means those rivers which are meeting the Bay of Bengal. Okay, sir. Now, Okay, the Western Ghats form a major river, water divide in the peninsula. So you, I already indicated and shown the peninsular region previously. Okay, just five minutes before I, sh I have shown the peninsular region. Now, Western Ghat, you know, Western Ghat starts from where? Actually, starts from Rajasthan. Okay, not desert. Okay, Mount Abu. Okay, Aravalli Range. Okay, and it starts and it, this Western Ghat region ends in Kerala. So, Western Ghat mountain ranges are the major part of the system because they divide the water of these various rivers. Okay. So, the peninsular rivers being, being rain fed. Now, these are rain fed. They are dependent on rain. More monsoon, more water discharge. Less monsoon, less water discharge. No monsoon or very less rain for a precipitation. No water discharge. You may see. Now, seldom face the problem of floods. Obviously, they never flood. Or they flood seldom. Seldom means um, very rarely they flood. Okay, when there is a, what you call that, sudden cloud burst and sudden heavy rain like last time, uh, last time occurred in Maharashtra. Okay. 
Now they are seasonal in nature. Now these are seasonal. Obviously, when there is a lot, uh, sorry, when there is a precip heavy precipitation in the monsoon season, they have lots of water discharge. But in what you call as summer, obviously they have less water or no water. Sometimes they totally dry out. Okay. So they are seasonal in nature. Now the waste flowing. These are the waste flowing rivers I am talking about. Are occupying the area between the Western Ghat. Western Ghat already shown you. Sayadri ranges in Maharashtra, but Western Ghat starts from the Aravalli ranges and it is in Kerala. So Western Ghat is also the largest region. Okay, largest mountain ranges in the Western uh, India. Now the waste flowing rivers occupying the area between the Western Ghat and the Arabian coast are short in length but swift. They are short. These rivers are very short, but they are very swift. Why? Because they are going to the mountain region and after again they are coming down to meet the Arabian Sea. Obviously, their flow or the current is very swift. Okay. Now, uh, sorry, this condition of short and swift river system exists in the states of Kerala. Where this short and swift river flows, especially in Kerala, then Karnataka, Maharashtra, and southern Gujarat. Okay, southern Gujarat, Maharashtra, as well as Kerala, and some part of Karnataka. Okay. Now the coastal rivers in Kerala have long extending backwaters near their mouths. These water bodies are locally known as kayals. In Malayalam, it is known as kayals. In English, we call it backwaters. And when you visit the Kerala, you can see and you can travel and you can enjoy the scenic beauty around the kayals. Scenic beauty means fields, means obviously they are at, uh, near to the land. So. The coastal rivers in Kerala have long extending water. Coastal rivers, when they are meeting the coast, coastal water of Arabian Sea, they have what you call that backwater near their mouths. Backwater. That is known as Kayals in Kerala. They are, it is called as Kayals in, we English, in English. We call it backwater, but in Kerala they call it Kayals. Now the further northwards or one come across the river system flowing in the Gulf of Khambat. Gulf of Khambat. You can see here Gulf of Khambat. Okay, so you can see here Gulf of Khambat. Okay, now not for the Gulf of Khambat, this river system of Tapi, Narmada, and Mahi and Sabarmati. You can see the Gulf of Khambat. There are Tapi river. This is the Gulf of Khambat. The river Tapi, river Narmada, river Mahi, and river Sabarmati. Four rivers you can see here Sabarmati. Then Mahi, then Narmada, then Tapi, this river flow and meet the Gulf of Khamba. Gulf of Khamba is also part of Arabian Sea. Okay. Even though it is known as Gulf of Khamba in southern Gujarat, it is a part of Arabian Sea. So obviously they meet Arabian Sea. In short, you can call it they meet Arabian Sea. Now the Tapi and Narmada flow slowly through rift valleys. Now Tapi and Narmada, you can see Tapi and Narmada, they flow through the rift valleys. Now from northeast to southwest direction, whereas river Sabarmati, river Sabarmati collecting is headwater from the southern slopes of Aravalli ranges. They already told you, Aravalli ranges are right here in Rajasthan. So they are collecting their headwater. They originate in Aravalli ranges or Aravalli, Aravalli mountain ranges. Okay, flowing somewhat north-south direction. They are flowing somewhat north-south direction. Another noteworthy river flowing in the catchment of Arabian Sea is river Luni. You can see here only one. River. Okay, above Sabarmati, there is only one river. That is River Luni. Okay, it originates along the western slope of Alavri Range. <coughs> it originates uh, in along the western slope of <coughs> Alavri Range and flows in somewhat northwest of south east direction and flows into Gulf of Kutch. It flows into the Gulf of Kutch. Actually, River Luni, you can see here it originates in Alavri Range. And it flows to the uh, what you call Rajasthan. Yet you will think that it is close to the Gujarat. No, actually directly meeting the Gulf of Run of Kutch. It is the Run of Kutch. It, it means the Run of Kutch or Gulf of Kutch. You may call it Gulf of Kutch. We call it Run of Kutch. Now river meeting the Bay of Bengal. Now this is the western side of river. There are so many rivers you can see. Uh, like uh, you have seen over there, western flowing river of uh, peninsular region. Now we will show eastern flowing rivers, which are meeting the Bay of Bengal. You can see here, Bay of Bengal. Okay. Now most of the area of peninsula is drained by the rivers flowing towards the Bay of Bengal. So you can see Mahanadi River, then Brahmani River, Brahmani River, then 
ब्राह्मणी रिवर देन सुबमरेखा सुबमरेखा रिवर दामोदर रिवर ओके एंड साबरी रिवर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी हियर ओके दीज आर मीटिंग एंड रिवर कावेरी ऑल्सो रिवर कावेरी ऑल्सो ओके नो वील वी विल अंडरस्टैंड एंड वील स्टडी अबाउट इट नाउ रिवर सॉरी मोस्ट ऑफ द एरिया ऑफ द पेनिसल इज ड्रेन बाय द रिवर फ्लोइंग टूअर्ड द बे ऑफ बेंगाल मोस्ट ऑफ द पेनिसल रीजन दे हैव द रिवर विच आर मोस्टली फ्लोइंग टूअर्ड द बे ऑफ बेंगाल द इंपॉर्टेंट रिवर्स ऑफ ग्रुप आर महानदी यू कैन सी महानदी महानदी यू कैन सी हियर महानदी ओके देन आफ्टरवर्स गोदावरी आफ्टरवर्स गोदावरी यू कैन सी हियर गोदावरी महानदी कृष्णा रिवर कृष्णा एंड कावेरी एक्चुअल दीज फोर आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट रिवर देर आर अदर रिवर्स ऑल्सो वर्ल्ड दीज फोर इंपॉर्टेंट रिवर विच आर द पार्ट ऑफ द पेनिसुलर रीजन and they meet the bay of bengal they meet the bay of bengal so occupy the north western part of the peninsula godavari krishna kaveri originate in eastern slopes of the western ghat now godavari kaveri and krishna you can see godavari kaveri and krishna actually these rivers originate in western ghat but instead of flowing to the western ghat or instead of flowing to the arabian sea they flow in opposite direction and meet the bay of bengal so they are going towards the eastern ghat they are going to the towards the eastern ghat and afterwards they are meeting the bay of bengal which river this godavari krishna and kaveri actually these or these are also the peninsula uh, peninsula river but they originate where in western ghat and they flow towards eastern ghat and they meet the bay of bengal okay towards the east river godavari is the second largest river system in indian terms of catchment area now river godavari is also called dakshin ganga it is also known in india as a dakshin ganga after ganga ganga's catchment area you can see so many rivers are contributing to the river ganga its tributaries are contributing to the water water what you call it water discharge of ganga but here godavari you can see godavari is the second river in india actually largest river is ganga okay brahmaputra is also but in catchment area after ganga which is the largest river godavari not himalaya only one himalayan river that is river ganga which is what you call the largest in part of catchment area but another is not a himalayan river but peninsula river that is nothing but the godavari in catchment area it is the largest river in india in terms of catchment area to the south of godavari to the south of godavari is located the basin of river krishna you can see river krishna its major tributaries are bhima and tungabhadra now krishna river tributaries are tungabhadra now you can see here river krishna and its tributaries are nothing but the bhima and tungabhadra which provides water to river krishna or which contributes to the water tributaries are nothing but the contributing water to the main river so main river is river krishna but which are the contributors to the water of a river krishna or tributaries bhima and tungabhadra river kaveri basin flows to the state of karnataka you can see karnataka kaveri it goes to the karnataka and tamil nadu actually this is the tamil nadu this is the part of kerala this is nothing the part of it go it comes from the tamil uh, sorry kerala uh, sorry karnataka and it goes to tamil nadu now it is one of the major rivers of peninsula this is also the major river of the peninsula it is also a peninsula river river kaveri is also a peninsula river now it is the river that has been harnessed for irrigation since a long time means when chola king was there chola uh, chola mandalam you call it chola mandalam or chola king uh, that is hundreds of thousands of years before they harnessed this river they used this river or they tap this uh, river's water for irrigation purposes means long time back and even now you are, we are using means indian government or government of karnataka and government of tamil nadu they are harnessing its water for irrigation projects irrigation purposes so the i already told you not the same thing is there do you know the chola king constructed a dam on the river kaveri chola king means in those period i told you hundreds and thousands years back in second century now we are living in 21st century so it is the second century ad 
near the Tiruchirapalli. Tiruchirapalli, you know, in Tamil Nadu. And started irrigation in the deltaic region and started using that uh, reverse water for deltaic region. Now, till today, the dam and its canals are operational. Even the dam was built in second century and even the canal to provide water for the irrigation purposes, for cultivation, for agricultural purposes. Yet, yet those dams and those uh, what you call that, canals are yet operational. So that's why Kaveri's uh, irrigation system is long back years before. It means its history is long back. Now, uh, this is the way our lesson ends. It is finished. Okay. You have to, uh, I will give you important question. Or homework okay now forget uh, about the what you call that uh, this one you can do uh, on your own orally uh, what is fill in the blanks and uh, match the following or whatever identify correct group but most important question question number two go to page number 23 question number two answer the following question question number two answer the following questions okay now Differentiate between the physiography of Brazil and India. Differentiate between the physiography of Brazil and India. This is the most important question. You have to, you must write it, understand it, look for it. Okay. Then you can see here differentiate between the physiography of brazil and india answer the following question question number two and a now second question what measures are being taken what measures are being taken what measures are being taken to control pollution in the rivers of india what measures okay this is the second question this is also very important then Third question, which is most important, explain the characteristic of North Indian plains. Explain the characteristic of North Indian plain. These three questions are very important in question number two. Then question number three, write short note on. Okay. Question number three, write short note on Amazon River Basin, Indian Peninsula, and the Great Escarpment. A d and e question number three a d and e amazon river basin then the indian peninsula and the great escarpment these three questions are very important for the short note purposes okay you just write it down and by heart it okay then question number four write geographical reasons now there are no west flowing rivers in brazil this is also the most important question and it appeared in March 2020 exam. Okay, but the exam was not done, but actually it appeared in 2019 also. Now there are dissimilar Western Western Coastal Media, few natural coastal Western Coastal. There are dissimilarities between the eastern and western coast of India. This is also very important. Okay, then identify correctly, you can easily do it on your own. These are the most important question. You must do it, complete it by heart. Hit, okay. And what's up? Okay. Uh, thank you, student. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you very much.